Hi, I'm Bon Ku, and I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My lecture will cover the use of ultrasound um, to obtain venous access. So uh, I will be speaking about how to uh, use ultrasound to obtain venous access of the internal jugular vein and the peripheral veins of the arm. Let's start first with the uh, internal jugular vein. In uh, 2001, the Agency for Healthcare uh, Research and Quality published safety practice guidelines with the greatest strength of evidence regarding their impact and effectiveness. The use of uh, real-time two-dimensional ultrasound and the insertion of central venous catheters in the internal jugular vein made the list. The use of ultrasound for central venous catheters is also the standard of care in other countries. The National Institute for Clinical Excellence, which provides guidance to the National Health Service in the United Kingdom, recommended uh, the use of ultrasound for central venous insertion in 2002. Um, but despite this uh, being the standard of care, many physicians uh, have excuses for not using ultrasound. Some of these are it takes too much time or uh, they feel pretty confident within uh, putting uh, central lines in without an ultrasound or, or they feel like they need to put in uh, central lines uh, blindly. Uh, but it's been um, well documented that um, using um, ultrasound for central venous access reduces complications and reduces the amount of uh, sticks to uh, cannulate the um, vein. Let's go over the uh, technique. You want to use a linear ray probe, which has a high frequency range in about 10 megahertz, and this allows optimal visual visualization of the veins, um, arteries, and nerves. In order to maintain sterility, you need both a sterile transducer cover and sterile gel to be used on the outside of the sheath cover. Sterile gel, um, uh, here, here's a, a picture of uh, sterile gel and the um, uh, sterile uh, transducer cover. Um, but you can use a non-sterile gel to place uh, right on the uh, transducer itself. So if you uh, don't have a sterile cover, you can use, uh, simply use a sterile glove. The patient positioning remains the same uh, both for, uh, for central venous access, whether or not you're using ultrasound. But be mindful of where you place the ultrasound machine um, because you will be using the ultrasound in real time. And you want to have a clear view of the screen while uh, performing the uh, central venous uh, cannulation. We're going to review the uh, sonographic anatomy. Um, in order to identify the internal jugular vein, you want to identify the uh, heads of the sternocleidomastoid uh, muscles, which are here. But finding the uh, internal jugular vein isn't always uh, so obvious. Even in uh, thin patients, uh, visual inspection of the uh, sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle can be difficult as demonstrated here. You can use either the uh, longitudinal or transverse approach to uh, cannulate the inter internal jugular vein. Uh, the main advantage of the longitudinal approach, which is uh, demonstrated here, is that you can visualize the tip of the needle. And here is uh, the needle entering into the vein itself. But the main disadvantage with the longitudinal approach is that you really can't visualize the uh, carotid artery uh, in relationship to the uh, internal jugular vein because it uh, often lies outside of the plane of the uh, internal jugular. With the uh, transverse approach, you can easily uh, visualize the carotid artery uh, next to the inter internal jugular vein. And so we're showing a transverse view here, and then now we're switching to the uh, longitudinal. And as you can see, once you switch from the transverse to longitudinal, the carotid artery falls out of the picture. And it's uh, because of this uh, that we recommend using the transverse approach to uh, cannulate the uh, internal jugular vein uh, in order to avoid an inadvertent 
um, carotid artery puncture. So how, how do you identify the internal jugular vein? Uh, the vein is uh, easily uh, compressible and it's thinner walled when compared to the uh, carotid. And if your patient is able to, you can ask him or her to Valsalva and you will appreciate the internal jugular vein increasing in size. You can also use a color flow, a non pulsatile color flow will confirm that the vessel is a vein and not an artery. Um, a pitfall is to rely on the pulsatility of uh, the carotid artery to distinguish it from the IJ uh, or internal jugular. As, as you can see here, the uh, internal jugular vein is more pulsatile than the uh, carotid because it's thinner walled. And the internal jugular vein is right above the uh, carotid right there and it's expanding its size because the patient's uh, valsalva vein. But the easiest way to determine whether or not the vessel is an uh, artery or vein is compressibility. Um, unless you're using extreme force, you will not be able to compress the carotid artery, but you will be able to easily compress the vein as demonstrated here. Before you cannulate the vein, make sure you line the uh, transducer marker to the uh, screen indicator. Uh, this is a crucial step because if you don't align the probe marker with the screen indicator, then your left and right will be reversed. This can get um, confusing when you're moving the needle to the left because it will look like you're actually moving it to the right um, on the screen when you're doing the procedure. Um, if you forget to do this, then um, after you and the probe are sterile, simply tap on the left side of the transducer and see if it corresponds to tapping uh, the left side of the screen. Next, you want to center the vessel in the middle of the screen and scan up and down the vein. You want to do this in order to find the optimal place to cannulate the internal juggler. Ideally, uh, find the spot where the vein is adjacent to and not on top of the carotid artery and where the uh, vein has the uh, greatest diameter. Because you can't see, uh, because you're not able to visualize the tip of the needle in the uh, transverse view, it's uh, possible to penetrate the entire vein and hit the carotid, carotid artery uh, below it. So you want to you want to make sure uh, you pay very special attention to where the carotid artery is. Next, you want to align the needle to the uh, center of the probe with at least a 45 degree angle, as demonstrated in this clip here. It's also uh, important to uh, be mindful of where the uh, clavicle is uh, because if you penetrate the internal jugular vein um, too close to the carotid, you can cause uh, pneumothorax. This is an example of a ring down artifact. It is a type of rever reverberation artifact, and it's uh, helpful to determine whether your needle is in the same plane as the vessel. So because you can't visualize the tip of the needle in the transverse view, look for deformation of the vein as the needle penetrates the wall, as demonstrated here. And one more thing to keep in mind is the depth of the vessel. As you can see here, the internal jugular vein is only 0.5 centimeters uh, below the skin surface. Um, Okay, now going on to uh, peripheral venous access. Uh, basically, it's the same uh, principles, but uh, much harder since the peripheral veins are smaller. And this is becoming widely used in emergency departments, uh, so much so that uh, it's not uncommon to have uh, patients requesting uh, the use of ultrasound to um, um, have their uh, peripheral veins accessed. 
I first look for veins uh, distal to the elbow because uh, uh, they are more superficial. But if I can't find a vein uh, distal to the elbow, then I move up proximally and I look specifically at the basilic and the uh, cephalic veins. Of note, when accessing uh, these veins, they're often deeper, so you would have to use a longer IV catheter. As with the internal jugular vein, I prefer using the transverse rather than the long approach. And you want to track the course of the peripheral vein and see if it's compressible. Another thing to keep in mind is you want to um, avoid uh, the nerve bundle as demonstrated right here. Um, Atul Gawande has uh, recently written a, a book that advocates the use of a checklist to reduce uh, surgical errors. And I like to keep uh, in my mind before uh, cannulating a vein a mental checklist. Uh, certain questions I ask myself, is this really a vein or an artery? Uh, can, do I have a clear view of the ultrasound machine? Because you want to be doing this um, in real time. Uh, and you want also to make sure uh, where your probe marker is, that it's aligned to the screen indicator. You want to be mindful of how deep the vein is relative to the skin surface, so you know how far to penetrate with your needle. Uh, you want to be able to um, be mindful where your needle tip is and look for deformation of the uh, vessel as the needle enters into it. And uh, you want to look for uh, a neurovascular bundle to make sure you don't in inadvertently hit it. Pay attention to the uh, clavicle to avoid um, causing a pneumothorax. And finally, before you're uh, um, before you penetrate the vein, uh, you want to double check for compressibility and make sure it's a vein and not an artery.